Welcome everyone back to the Pommy Oz channel. I hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I can't thank you enough for the support. You can become a member of the channel as well. Link is in the description to do that. Memberships are back active again. So if you want to do that for me, that really does help the channel out as well. And we're here today to talk about Cowton's two-point defeat versus the Adelaide Crows in what was a tightly contested game. So let's get into it. This game was a real tough one, I think, to watch. And it was a real disjointed effort from the Blues. We were playing a team that we talked about in the preview. Gave me a lot of first five games with Carlton uh, last year that the worst thing you can do was allow them to gain confidence and gain a little bit of ascendancy and a little bit of a feel for the ball. And they, they were in it for a long time. And they were, without a shadow of a doubt, the better side for large portions of the game. And you could see them start to grow in confidence as the game went on. And this is the issue with this league. I think that their, their margin, that their 0 and 4 start was very overplayed. It was a lack of cohesion. And they managed to get that cohesion throughout the game, which often happens. I did find it kind of a surprise. I said in my preview, I was expecting the fourth quarter of the pressure that we built up to come in the first. I thought that was a really good point for the Blues to really enact it and really get them questioning it. But it didn't quite work out. And once Adelaide got there, you could see Cowan had this very deep trap, which we've seen have success against Brisbane and against Richmond. A real deep layered trap where we try and isolate who we perceive our best interceptor in Mitch McGovern and try and get that kick out there. We saw we try it with Kemp against Fogarty, which for most parts I thought Kemp beat Fogarty. But they were buying it. And what really did showcase, and we saw this against Fremantle, and we saw this against Richmond as well, is Carlton's high defensive line comes a cropper with that short, sharp movement. And the uneducated eye would call it quick movement. I think you're doing it a disservice because it's not quick without purpose. It's short, and they work their ways around Carlton's high zone. And what that did then is once they broke the first two lines, you saw the forward line, which is about the half forward line of defence. Once they chip kicked around that, they then could go to the midfield, which the midfield and the defence line is the same. And then we just have that kind of back pocket. As you look at the AFL um, team sheet, that back pocket is the final line. But once they got past that midfield and defence line, it was hell to pay. And that's why they had so many uncontested marks in that forward 50 avenue. And... This is really a tale of where Carlton can learn from this. The last two games we've played, teams have really seen that if you push Carlton out wide, it takes away their corridor use. And Carlton are really reluctant to come in the corridor. And Adelaide had numbers there dominating on intercepts and turnover. And this again shows you where the onus in the first couple of rounds has been getting that intercept and turnover game. Carlton's next evolution is trying to work out how to do that when we're pushed out wide, when they can't set them corridor traps and they have to commit men out wide to make sure that they can get the ball moving forward, we start to see, I wouldn't say the wheels come off, but it's definitely not a refined game plan. And it's something that you can see going back to last year where Voss was talking about the defence has to work harder. This is the case in point here because the numbers don't lie. The running numbers on Adelaide dwarf scout, and particularly in defence, the speed in defence is mental. Their ability to get back in droves was better than ours. And although Carlton with the superior running side, it's the time, it's intelligent running. And the intelligent running of Adelaide's defence was insane time and time again to commit numbers forward, but then to stifle Carlton's corridor use and slow them down. And we saw a lot of kicks and... The big thing that I'm looking at from the Blues at the moment is you saw when Saad goes off. I, I think we need another runner there. Now, the fastest player at our club is Alex Chincotta. You'd suspect that he's been managed this week in VFL. He would be a shot. And if Mitch McGovern's out, they're definitely going to have to go another toll. Now, they do seem to like that kemp wheatering combination. And we'll come on to Kemp a bit later on. Is that a Lachlan Cowan who has been playing a lot more of that intercept role and probably a more natural Mitch McGovern game in the first VFL game? We're going to see him tonight in the Collingwood VFL game. That could be a really interesting perspective and maybe an avenue that the Blues look at. 
But you saw once that run and carry, Zach Williams had to do it. There was there were missing one kick down there, and that was Matt Kennedy, who I thought tried incredibly hard down the back half of the ground. But I want him in the guts. Like for me, it's now come a point to me. I don't want him getting junk time goals in the forward half of the ground. I want him in the guts. I want him to be that muscle there. And if he's not available, I'd rather we play a player who's got a fit purpose, who has got a defined role, as opposed to being an it's a bit supplier. And I feel like we're doing him a disservice because you saw that the ball used there in the back half of the ground, when that's usually Zach Williams, he changed the whole perception of how that looked, I thought. Moving forward, though, what are the takeouts of this game that are positive? We'll cover more in the five things we learned. But for me, I always think, going back to my time in elite sport in golf, some of the best times to look at are when you're, you can blame yourself, when you can be honest with yourself and go, right, I fucked up here because of X, Y, Z. And there was individual moments in this game, which we're not going to pick on the players too much, but Kemp and Boyd, that ball coming down, it needs to be spoiled over the line. Them little moments, they... Ollie Hollands missed tackle. It, was, it wasn't it was a great effort at that tackle. Them little things there, they can look back on the tape and go, right, we need to be smarter. We need to be better. And that gives me a bit of assurance because this isn't a game where it's a total team breakdown. This was just a side outsmarting you, particularly with that high back line. And it felt like watching the game on the replay, where I watch it a little bit slower, they really set that trap for that deep kick that Fogarty does. That that Fogarty is the target. And they never did it all day. They did it twice. They really then were happy to go short. And you saw Tex there leading that way with Ben Keys, with ranking, coming up really deep and taking Mark 60 out. Carlton didn't have a preordained plan for that. And this is the adaptability part of the Blues. It's good that we played... In my opinion, four, three out of ten and got ran to within two points. But this is where you've got to maximise it because a lot of them uncontested inside 50 marks could have been negated had we just played a little bit deeper in the ground. Another issue I've got with the Blues at the moment is this. It feels like sometimes we're forcing it forward. You see it when Ollie Hollands gets the ball, Blake Akers, Hewitt. There was that passage of play, Blake Akers inside 50. Easy square the ball to an uncontested mark. He's gone forward. A bit of intelligent ball movement at times. You don't have to get inside 50s. You look at the difference with Adelaide. They weren't looking to penetrate inside 50 all the time because it opens up turnovers. And it's interesting that Carlton's majority of turnovers are from the midfield. They avoided the corridor like the plague in the midfield. And they were happy to go down the wing and then have that late switch into the corridor, about 65 out. Carlton are really trying to get that inside 50. And it makes sense. They've got Harry Mackay. They've got Charlie Kerner. It makes total sense. You've got to play to your strengths. My big issue with that, though, is they're not always set up. And genuinely, when we are there, it's taken us so long to get 65 out that these players are two, three on ones. I think moving forward, the Blues really have to find a way of bringing Elijah into the game. And definitely a player like Jesse Motlop who will lead from the pocket. Because I felt like Fantasia got caught in transition. He's playing that fifth man up almost, which is this new position we're seeing quite a bit around stoppages. We need someone to make that lead, that dummy league at least. Like you see Oliver Henry do to try and get that there. And you saw Ben Keys, he's an incredible footballer. And the reason that he hurts Carlton is purely because of that high zone. We've seen this being a staple of Vossi's game for three years. And unfortunately, once Sardi went off, it really changed the matchups there, which made it even easier for him. And this is where you need that third type at all. So it's interesting. Pettinet coming in, I know he's going to be a big point of contention. Yeah, our stoppage and clearance game did get better with him there. I think that's largely down to Sam Walsh, though. I think Sam Walsh was everywhere and it... It would have been interesting how that game played out if you'd had Chera next to him and another elite runner. It was an interesting selection because I thought Riley O'Brien was sensational. Uh, and I thought he negated TDK and Pitonet quite well, particularly around the ground and particularly around the stoppage clearances. 
of how he made it hard for TDK to be that extra midfielder, which has really helped out. That is probably something there where I feel like when we played the two rugs, felt like we didn't really have enough point of differences. And it felt like when I was watching that game, say Pitonet is not there, say Carroll comes in, you've got an extra off the pine. Is there any extras on the pine? It's probably tough to say. All in all, that game stings. And that game's going to be one of them games that Carlton will look back and go, if you play a dangerous game, you eventually have to answer for your dangerous game. And at the moment, we have been so inefficient and not taking our chances that the Fremantle game, I felt like we kept them in it. I think it was more of a case of they, their inefficiency and our inefficiency, Miri added. This game here, there was opportunities to win. Obviously, when you're leading by 16 with such a short point of time, when you've had the previous history of winning so many tight ones, should be a formality. But the problem is, you play with fire, eventually you're going to get your little handsy pansies burn, aren't you? And this time, the Blues did. And it's them raw basics. It felt very panicked that last two minutes. And when Sam Berry kicked that goal, I think it pretty much iced the wind out of it. The Blues have got to be smarter. And they're still a work in progress. I think this is what it told me is, as excited as we've been and as professionals we've been, we're still a work in progress. There's still a long way to go. This isn't the team that's going to be playing September in a final that wins the thing and brings home the, the, another trophy to Icon Park. This is the team that is on its journey still to there. We're in the nitty gritty part of the book now. We've had the start. We're getting towards that fabulous ending. And this is a real big lesson for the Blues here that when teams do negate and take the wing, push you out wide, slow your movement down, you have to be bold and a little bit more ostentatious with the ball movement and not just use it for the sake of it. And that is a maturity layer that they will get because they are now in games and they're playing where margins are so important. Their structure kept them in this game for large portions of the game because their structure is defensively solid. It was the application that was missing this week. And that, if anything, for me is a positive. When the application isn't quite there, but the structure holds you in good stead, which I feel like is the case for maybe three of the four games this year before this, that the structure protects you. Now it's the application and being a bit more bold. We go on to GWS. We're men down now. We're really getting into the portion now where we see Nick Austin and the hard work the coaches are doing. I, for one, are backing them in. They've got a big task at hand against GWS. But I'll tell you what, they now have to make right or wrong. And this game is a one that's got away. Now we've got to steal a game that's gone against us. Peace, love and light, everyone. Let me know your takeouts of the game. We'll be back with the five things we learned. Much love, everyone. Palm out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad